as the vapor of the clouds form droplets and fall upon the fields which they choose to foster, the formless absolute individualizes itself, assumes a form, and comes down among humanity to save and sustain. That is the secret of God coming down as man. The cloud takes pity on the crop being parched in the sun, but once the rain comes, even the sun has its uses. So too, when the grace of the Lord is gained, then ego and greed can be put to profit by being made to flow into useful channels. On November 23, 1968, Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba gave a discourse on the occasion of his 43rd birthday, explaining his nature as an avatar and the purpose of his incarnation. That speech has since become a landmark for anyone studying his life and teachings. The following narration, translated and spoken by Mr. N. Kasturi, has been drawn from that discourse. As we hear Satya Sai Baba's words, we will see him at Prashanti Niliam, his ashram in South India, where he walks among the crowds accepting letters from devotees asking for help and guidance, choosing some for the eagerly awaited personal interview. We will also see him occasionally materializing Vibhuti Ash from the elements by a wave of his hand as a special blessing. ఆత్మస్వరూపులారా త్రిగుణ మిళితమైనటువంటి ఈ ప్రకృతి ఎందు ధర్మ క్షీణము అధర్మము ప్రబలిపోయినప్పుడల్లా అవతారం అనేటువంటిది ఫర్ ది ప్రొటెక్షన్ ఆఫ్ ది వర్చ్యూస్ ఫర్ ది డిస్ట్రక్షన్ ఆఫ్ ఈవిల్ డూయర్స్ అండ్ ఫర్ ఎస్టాబ్లిషింగ్ రైచియస్నెస్ ఆన్ ఎ ఫర్మ్ ఫుటింగ్ ఐ ఇన్కార్నేట్ ఫ్రమ్ ఏజ్ టు ఏజ్ వెన్ ఎవర్ అశాంతి ఆర్ దిస్ హార్మనీ overwhelms the world the lord will incarnate in human form to establish the modes of earning peace and to reeducate the human community in the paths of peace at the present time strife and discord have robbed peace and unity from the family the school the community the society the villages the cities and the state The arrival of the Lord is also anxiously awaited by saints and sages. Sadhus prayed and I have come. My main tasks are fostering of the Vedas and fostering of devotees. Your virtue, your self-control, your detachment, your faith, your steadfastness, these are the signs by which people read Vedas. of my glory you can lay claim to being a devotee only when you have placed yourself in my hands fully and completely with no trace of ego you can enjoy the bliss through the experience the avatar confers the avatar behaves in a human way so that mankind can feel kinship but rises into his superhuman heights so that mankind can aspire to reach the heights and through that aspiration can actually reach him realizing the lord within you as the motivator is the task for which he comes in human form avatars like rama and krishna had to kill one or more individuals 
who could be identified as enemies of the dharmic way of life and thus restore the practice of virtue. But now there is no one fully good. And so who deserves the protection of God? All are tainted by wickedness. And so who will survive if the avatar decides to uproot? Therefore I have come to correct the buddhi, the intelligence, by various means. I have to counsel, help, command, condemn, and stand by as a friend and well-wisher to all, so that they may give up evil propensities, and recognizing the straight path, tread it and reach the goal. I have to reveal to the people the worth of the Vedas, the Shastras, and other spiritual texts which lay down the norms. If you accept me and say yes, I too respond and say yes, yes, yes. If you deny and say no, I also echo no. Come, examine, experience, have faith. That is the method of utilizing me. I do not mention about Sai Baba in any of my discourses, though I bear the name as Avatar of Sai Baba. I do not appreciate in the least the distinction between the various appearances of God, Sai, Rama, Krishna, etc. I do not proclaim that this is more important or that the other is less important. Continue your worship of your chosen God along the lines already familiar to you. Then you will find that you are coming nearer and nearer to me. For all names are mine and all forms are mine. There is no need to change your chosen God and adopt a new one when you have seen me and heard me. Every step in the career of the avatar is predetermined. Rama came to feed the roots of satya or truth and dharma or righteousness. Krishna came to foster shanti, peace and prema, love. Now all these four are in danger of being dried up. That is why the present avatar has come. The dharma that had fled to the forests has to be led back into the villages and towns. The anti-dharma that is ruining the villages and towns has to be driven into the jungle. Come, just one step forward. I shall take a hundred steps towards you. Shed just one tear. I shall wipe a hundred from your eyes. I bless only thus. May your bliss grow. I have come to give you the key of the treasure of ananda or bliss, to tell you how to tap that spring, for you have forgotten the way to blessedness. If you waste this chance of saving yourselves, it is just your fate. You have come to get from me tinsel and trash, the petty little cures and promotions, worldly joys and comforts. Very few of you desire to get from me the thing I have come to give you, namely liberation itself. And even among these few, those who stick to the path of spiritual practice and succeed are a handful. Your worldly intelligence cannot fathom the ways of God. He cannot be recognized by mere cleverness of intelligence. You may benefit from God, but you cannot explain Him. Your explanations are merely guesses, attempts to clothe your ignorance in pompous expressions. Bring something into your daily practice 
as evidence of your having known the secret of the higher life from me. Show that you have greater brotherliness. Speak with more sweetness and self-control. Bear defeat as well as victory with calm resignation. I am always aware of the future, the past as well as the present of every one of you. So I am not so moved by mercy. Since I know the past, the background, the reaction is different. It is your consequence of evil deliberately done in the previous birth, and so I allow your suffering to continue, often modified by some little compensation. I do not cause either joy or grief. You are the designer of both these chains that bind you. I am Ananda Swarupa. Come, take Ananda from me. Dwell on that ananda or bliss and be full of peace. My acts are the foundations on which I am building my work, the task for which I have come. All the miraculous acts which you observe are to be interpreted so. The foundation for a dam requires a variety of materials. Without these it will not last and hold back the waters. When the Lord is incarnated, it has to be used in various ways by man for his uplift. The Lord has no intention to publicize himself. I do not need publicity, nor does any other avatar of the Lord. What are you daring to publicize? Me? What do you know about me? You speak one thing about me today and another tomorrow. Your faith has not become unshakable. You praise me when things go well and blame me when things go wrong. When you start publicity, you descend to the level of those who compete in collecting clientele by decrying others and extolling themselves. Where money is calculated, garnered, or exhibited to demonstrate one's achievements, I will not be present. I come only where sincerity and faith and surrender are valued. The establishment of dharma, righteousness, that is my aim. The teaching of dharma, the spread of dharma, that is my object. These miracles, as you call them, are just a few means towards that end. Some of you remark that Ramakrishna Paramahamsa said that the siddhis or yogic powers are obstructions in the path of the sadhaka. Yes. Siddhis may lead the sadhaka or the spiritual aspirant astray. Without being involved in them, he has to keep straight on. His ego will bring him down if he yields to the temptation of demonstrating his yogic powers. This is the correct advice which every aspirant should heed. But the mistake lies in equating me with a sadhaka like the one whom Ramakrishna wanted to help and warn. These siddhis or yogic powers are just the nature of the avatar, the creation of things with intent to protect and to give joy is spontaneous and lasting. Creation, preservation and dissolution can be accomplished only by the Almighty, no one else Cynics carp without knowledge. If they learn the shastras or scriptures, or if they cultivate direct experience, they can understand me. Your innate laziness prevents you from the spiritual exercises necessary to discover the nature of God. This laziness should go. 
It has to be driven out of man's nature in whatever shape it appears. That is my mission. My task is not merely to cure and console and remove individual misery, but it is something far more important. The removal of misery and distress is incidental to my mission. My main task is the re-establishment of Vedas and Shastras and revealing the knowledge about them to all peoples. This task will succeed. It will not be limited. It will not be slowed down. When the Lord decides and wills, His divine will cannot be hindered. You must have heard people say that mine is all magic, but the manifestation of divine power must not be interpreted in terms of magic. Magicians play their trick for earning their maintenance, worldly fame and wealth. They are based on falsehood and they thrive on deceit. But this body can never stoop to such low level. This body has come through the Lord's resolve to come. That resolve is intended to uphold satya or truth. Divine resolve is always true resolve. Remember, There is nothing that divine power cannot accomplish. It can transmute earth into sky and sky into earth. To doubt this is to prove that you are too weak to grasp great things, the grandeur of the universe. I have come to instruct all in the essence of the Vedas, to shower on all this precious gift, to protect Sanatana Dharma, the ancient wisdom, and preserve it. My mission is to spread happiness, and so I am always ready to come among you, not once, but twice or thrice, as often as you want me. Many of you probably think that since people from all parts of India, and even foreign countries outside India, come to Puttaparthi, They must be pouring their contributions into the coffers of the Nilayam. But let me declare the truth. I do not take anything from anyone except their love and devotion. This has been my consistent practice for the last many years. People who come here are giving me just the wealth of faith, devotion and love. That is all. Many of you come to me with problems of health and mental worry of some sort or the other. They are mere baits by which you have been brought here. But the main purpose is that you may have the grace and strengthen your faith in the Divine. Problems and worries are really to be welcomed as they teach you the lessons of humility and reverence. Running after external things produces all this discontent. That type of desire has no end. Once you become a slave to the senses, they will not leave hold until your death. It is an unquenchable thirst. But I call you to me and even grant worldly boons so that you may turn Godward. No avatar has done like this before going among the masses, counselling them, guiding them, consoling them, uplifting them and directing them along the path of Satya, Dharma, Shanti and Prema. My activities and movements will never be altered, whoever may pass whatever opinion on them. I shall not modify my plans for dharmasthapana, the establishment of righteousness, my discourses or my movements. I have stuck to this determination for many years and I am engaged in the task for which I have come, that is to inculcate faith in the path of prashanti. 
I shall not stop nor retract a step. Not even the biggest scientist can understand me by means of his laboratory knowledge. I am always full of bliss. Whatever may happen, nothing can come in the way of my smile. That is why I am able to impart joy to you and make your burden lighter. I never exult when I am extolled, nor shrink when I am reviled. Few have realized my purpose and significance, but I am not worried. When things that are not in me are attributed to me, why should I worry? When things that are in me are mentioned, why should I exult? For me, it is always yes, yes, yes. If you give up all and surrender to the Lord, He will guard you and guide you. The Lord has come just for this very task. He is declaring that He will do so and that it is the very task that has brought Him here. I know the agitations of your heart and its aspirations, but you do not know my heart. I react to the pain that you undergo and to the joy that you feel, for I am in your heart. I am the dweller in the temple of every heart. Do not lose contact and company, for it is only when the lump of coal is in contact with the live embers that it can also become live ember. Cultivate nearness with me in the heart and you will be rewarded. Then you too will acquire a fraction of the supreme love. This is a great chance. This chance will not come your way again. Beware of that. If you cannot and do not cross the sea of grief now, taking hold of this chance, when again can you get such a chance? Be confident that you will all be liberated. Know that you are saved. Go and tell all that you had come to Puttaparthi and that you got here the secret of liberation. Many hesitate to believe that things will improve, that life will be happy for all and full of joy and that the golden age will recur. Let me assure you that this Dharmasvarupa, this divine body has not come in vain. It will succeed in averting the crisis that has come upon humanity. There is only one God of Japan. He is omnipresent. There is only one language, language of the heart. There is only one caste, caste of humanity. There is only one religion, religion of love. Love is God. Live in love.